Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Fabian. I am the CEO and co-founder of Kaif Network. And today we're going to talk about a bit on how to make trustless data um, a public good and why it's so important to work with public data uh, in the blockchain space. Oh, there we go. Um, it's going to be a very quick uh, talk today, just basically quickly talking about some risks, what that can occur to a project if you are working with, uh, with data. We're going to talk a bit about Kive and how we solve this problem, some integrations we are currently working with, some use cases, and then also a bit of like alpha on what's coming up next um, on, the, on the Kive side. So basically, there are a lot of fundamental problems working with data in the Web3 space. The first problem is the communication in general. Right? So Web2 is not made to communicate with Web3. Web3 is not made to communicate with Web2. And Web3 is sometimes not even made to communicate with Web3. Right? So we're really facing this early stage data infrastructure times right now where we have to think about, well, how can we glue this all together? Right? And the other problems that occur there are also like, how do we access these large amounts of data? We see this especially in the data infrastructure layer on nodes, right? If you now would start up an Ethereum node, it takes weeks for your nodes to sync and get up to speed. So usually some projects rely on more or less centralized snapshots um, to get basically your node up to speed faster. But of course, this how do you trust a node? Basically, or how do you as a node runner trust a centralized um, snapshot? I think that's something we, we, have, we have to think about, like what happens if there's some incorrect data being introduced there. Um, in general, also, the cost of distribution leads to centralization. So what does this mean? Um, actually, Solana is quite a good example for that, where Solana is highly decentralized on the block production level, right? Because there is no incentive for the nodes to keep the data around, the problem is actually that node runners tend to then prune their local data storage just because they make more profit, right? You don't have to maintain um, a whole data team to manage the data and make it indexable. You don't get any money for, for, for doing this. So of course, you maximize for profit just optimizing for block production and not actually optimizing for uh, data availability from the historical things. And actually, on Solana, right, this is a, a fact there that like the team is, I think, one of the only, uh, like the core team, of course, one of the only um, people out there that actually maintain a public node where you can really access all the data. I know it costs a lot of money. Um, otherwise, if you're a developer and you want to have access to the early Solana data, you probably need to go to Coinbase Cloud or some other infrastructure providers to purchase a node there. right? So you're really not in this trustless system, except if you maintain yourself a huge data team um, to do this. But a lot of projects just cannot afford the cost that comes with that. And also, actually, another problem is that with all the oracles uh, coming now up, if we don't focus on full decentralization, we're actually starting to introduce this very dangerous like, single point of failure into our projects. And this is what we see right now happening in the last weeks, to be honest. We see more and more and more um, hacks on oracles. Because it's so easy, they usually have some kind of centralized piece of software in there because they want to be fast, because they want to be efficient, right? And what's happening right now is actually we are building another 2008, what happened in the financial crisis, on the blockchain kind of like space right now where we keep stacking insecure infrastructure on top of each other for UX reasons, for performance reasons. And it's just a matter of time, right, until we see this huge cascading effect where one of the like oracles, for example, gets, uh, gets destroyed or gets hacked and it takes down a whole ecosystem. And to be honest, all the big projects we know out there that had received a major hack are not really coming back, right? So we really need to focus on providing and building secure data infrastructure to really kind of like make sure that projects are capable of building on top of secure infrastructure. Um, and basically, well, Kaif is kind of aiming to solve this problem. We are building a fully decentralized data lake, um, meaning that we take a lot of data from other blockchains, from Web2 sources, making it trustless and turning it into, turning it into a public good. Um, and the way it works is that basically the Kive system stores data onto permanent storage like Arweave, or we're also working on a Filecoin integration, right? And then makes it from there accessible to developers. And the way the data gets turned into trustless data is by a proof of stake mechanism. So let's take Polkadot um, as an example and Kive. So a Kive node would pull down block number five from Polkadot, store it on the permanent storage layer, and then raise 
um, to the blockchain the proposal for the other nodes to please vote on this piece of data. So the other nodes run the validation step on it, which would be, oh, does my local data equal the data I have downloaded? Or some other validation checks for pricing would be, oh, is there a, a certain slippage that we keep or that is maybe broken? And then the, the Kive blockchain then keeps the proof that this piece of data is valid. So developers can always safely fetch from that, um, of course, enabling it then to have this yeah, immutable, secure archive to always recover from, do data analytics on, um, or different things. Um, perfect. Then we quickly go a bit more into the, uh, into the depth of it. So we use... Um, a tool called a storage pool. So a storage pool executes a runtime, for example, the Bitcoin runtime, where a developer describes on how data from Bitcoin gets relayed onto permanent storage and also what the validation function looked like. Then protocols that are in interested in getting access to the data that we are storing are funding the pool. And as long as the pool has funding, it keeps running. If a pool would ever run out of funding, it pauses. And this is where the base incentive of the Kive network comes in, where as long as we have people working with the data and there's an interest and value in this data, we have this funding mechanism going on. The funding from the pool then gets paid out over time to the validators that are validating and relaying the data, um, and they are also securing it. In case a validator uploads incorrect data, um, they, get, they receive the slash. So that's kind of like the main incentive uh, and security mechanism behind that. Um, we have a lot of kind of like active integrations going on, mostly with any major um, L1 and L2 um, out there. Kive started out as a bounty project between um, Arweave and Parity. So Polkadot, so of course, this was our initial um, start. And from there, very early on, we expanded to basically all other blockchain networks and also now focusing a lot on Web2 data. Some uh, interesting customer requirements we have there are, for example, uh, sports betting data, where the question is, how do we get sports betting data on-chain securely? How do we get uh, weather data is another interesting use case. We have a region network. How do we get this weather data on chain? How do we make this available? And especially, how do we make it trustless? How can we build a new protocol working with existing data without taking it out to a risk? Um, the main use case for Kaif basically right now is still archiving purposes and multi-chain access, meaning that bridging data from one chain to another through um, IBC solutions like um, Accela or something, something we are highly focusing on. Data feeds for auditors goes in that direction. How do I make sure if I'm actually an auditor that, for example, my transaction I see on Etherscan, for example, is correct, right? What, th there is no legal kind of like layer to that, that I, if I would be in court and I would say, yeah, listen, but this like, ether scan says I have this and that many ETHs, no one knows it's actually correct. You need to look on the chain, but then on-chain data access is expensive. It's hard to get, right? So with tools like Kive, this makes these things much easier. I already went a bit into the climate and into the DeFi data, but this is mostly about creating validated trustless data. Um, so what's up next um, for Kive? As I said, we started out as a bounty with first integrations one and a half years ago, have been through the whole like, tech journey of pivoting away from Arweave to being a Solidity contract and now finally setting um, as a Cosmos SDK-based um, chain. We run our incentivized testnet with roughly 40,000 um, active participants there. We are right now um, implementing different storage backends like Filecoin, um, Arweave, and some others. Um, we're doing the code freeze in a week, so that's going to be a very exciting um, phase for us. And then we really just from there on pave the road to mainnet, which would hopefully be by the end of um, this year. Um, if you have any other questions, I'm going to be, I think, at the center um, whiteboard down there. Um, you can also follow us on all social medias um, we have out there if you want to keep up to date with all the progresses. And yeah, if you have any questions, happy to meet you there. And uh, thank you so much.